Hey folks, how's it going? I'm here with round one of Coin Flip Cube League. Um, if you haven't seen the rest of the video series that I've got so far, uh, make sure to check those out. Those uh, detail my, my Cube League draft for Coin Flip Cube and the deck that I have built. Um, we're gonna jump right into round one here. I am playing against Mysterious Player who has a really vicious um, Bronzong and Fortress um, spread deck that uh, relies on um, Cycler Bronzong with its heavy potential attack, which um, puts damage counters equal to each of your opponent's Pokemon's retreat cost, um, and uh, a spreading Fortress that also hits based on retreat cost and um, he amplifies those as well with uh, Team Aqua's Secret Base. Um, pairs that with a couple Counter Catcher. So it's a, it's a really vicious deck. Um, uh, I, I played against Mysterious Player when we were testing out decks before the league started, and both of us have definitely made changes to our decks that have improved them, but he did beat me two to one in that set. Um, his deck included an Arcanine package, um, but that Arcanine package is not here. The, the only thing that is left is still the Fire Energy because he plays a couple Candela. Um, but uh, yeah, we're gonna go ahead, uh, jump right into the game. One thing that you will notice is that um, I'm playing this back at a, a faster pace, and when I, when I did record the video, I did not realize that um, the my hand and like the bottom of my browser was cut off. <laughs> so you really won't be able to see my hand, so it kind of will be going from a completely blind perspective, but uh, hopefully for the rest of the rounds I'll be able to uh, correct that and make make our untapped viewing experience as painless as possible, but I mean it's untapped, so what can you do? But uh, alright, we'll go ahead and jump into the game here. Um, I'm going to try and let it run as much as possible, I might pause it for whatever whatever plays I have to explain, but uh, okay. Um, uh, game one, I win the coin flip and go first. Um, my hand, if I remember correctly, is good enough in that we have Swablu, Altaria, and energy attaches. So I open up with just a quick wall away chat dot, and I'm going to go find um, Unknown Q to start uh, powering up some energy. You can see my hand there is just good enough. Like it, it gets me to play the game. Uh, ironically, I'm not going to play that Eric for like th three turns. I'm just going to hold on to it and not play any supporters. But uh, MP also similarly popping off on his first turn with a dual ball, getting Pineco and Bronzong, and then using Cleffa's ability to draw him six new cards. And I hop right into my turn. I use Unknown Y to pull out some more energy, and then. I don't even attach the rainbow energy here. Um, I just go right for the Draco Melody. I don't, that's probably a misplay, but but, uh, but we did that. MP then on his response turn, gets Cycler Bronze on to play, plus Team Aqua Seeker Base. Um, and then a Looker's Investigation to refresh his hand. On the other side of the Looker's, finds uh, DRE, and so, so at this point I'm in a really rough situation. So he's going to use Heavy Potential, put a number of damage counters on your opponent's Pokemon equal to the number of uh, energy in that uh, Pokemon's retreat cost. So my unknown is one attack from being knocked out, um, and uh, we're starting to spread some damage. One thing that, that I haven't noted yet in this game, Dragonite is prized. Um, so if I want to go into that, um, I have to I I have to uh, get a Zelf into play and then sand flap the Dragonite back into deck. Um, I'll go for that in a couple turns, but because he went for a s super fast heavy potential, um, I'm pressured to get those energy off of the unknown and start pressuring him back. So I'm going to go in with a sand flap next turn. Um, but I have to be a little convoluted to get there. 
he's going to go ahead and use Cycler, and then uh, go ahead and spread two damage counters to everything. He's flying flipping. Now that I have Flygon in play, Erica is a pretty easy play um, because I'm just going to sand flap him and reduce his hand, so it's just draw three for me, no repercussions. I've drawn a, a level ball off of that. I also drew, drew Shaman, which is really good. So I'm going to get Azelf and then Unknown Y. Or Q. Unknown Q. I already have Unknown Y. Um, you'll see here I goof around with <laughs> optimally attaching the Rainbow Energy to the Unknown Y before I then Celebration Wind and move it. I'll use Time Walk to get the Dragonite. Then. I'll Celebration Wind, move all my energy around. Doing so in a weird way so that I don't have, so I have the correct energy. Retreat the Altaria for two. Attach the Unknown Q so I can't uh, be spread. And then I go for the Sand Flap. Or no, I don't go for the Sand Flap because he has a gigantic hand. Now, here I take two off the, uh, off the Erica. I should have taken none. Um, and really just try to make him match hand sizes that way. Um, and so he's going to end up actually being able to thin down his hand as well as spread some damage with Fortress. Attach for turn Cynthia. Now it's entirely possible that he could have been able to play down his hand and even further down, but... He's going to use Strange Spin, which, if we're matching hand sizes, will do 60 and Confusion. At this point, I unoptimally play Energy Restore. I should have retreated first. Um, but I'm just going to go ahead and bring Dragonite into play. So I'm going to Sand Flap him back into deck. Um, just kind of... I'm not in danger of that Flygon being spread a bunch of damage. Um, and then I also... Uh, also going to drop a training center so that Altaria is out of range of Strange Spin. Um, and we'll go for another Draco Melody and get a Dragonite into play. He immediately responds with his Team Aqua Secret Base. Important to note in this matchup, we each have two Stadium Bumps. So whoever's playing the Stadium Bump first will probably <laughs> lose the Stadium more. Um, I'm playing one Training Center and one Windstorm, and he's playing two base. Uh, Professor Birch's observations to draw to shuffle draw seven, and get a new hand. Now he can threaten with the Cycler if he matches hand sizes here, but he's going to draw up with the Cycler and get some energy. He's just going to spread and take the first knockout on my unknown. Now at this point, I've got a ton of damage already on board. It's like. Omega feels bad. <laughs> um, to which point that I'm just going to take this time to attach return, um, get a single card from deck with Night Teleporter, and then Sand Flap myself. Well, actually, no, I'm going to get a little late draw six. Probably still Sand Flap MP. I'm going to finish this turn off with going for the Cotton Guard. Yeah. At this point, I Comp Search, get rid of teammates and Gigas. I believe I'm going to go get a Windstorm. Yeah, I get a Windstorm to get rid of the Stadium. Because um, important to note that Fortress in the back also attacks relative to retreat costs. Um, and, uh, well, the other thing important to note is that I, I discarded the Regigigas, who is my only third attacker. Um, realistically, though, it's hard to power up Regigigas if I'm not powering it up. Take the knockout with um, Cotton Guard, so I'm protecting myself. He's going to go ahead and surprise Time Machine, though, the Fortress, um, into... into the uh, spreading one. He's going to add more chip damage with, uh, with Thorn Tempest Fortress. He's going to play down Unknown D, which is a big threat, but uh, he's just going to pass the turn. He doesn't have the attack really well. This gives me a great opportunity for a double gust. He's going to bring up Shaman. I'm going to bring up the Fortress. And I have Volkner in hand for Lightning Energy Switch, which is exactly what I need. Just an energy drop and switch out. So I'll 
clear one of his big threats off the board. I'll play it on Celebi Prime, which is another uh, great uh, accelerator for me, but it is a big spread liability at only 60 HP. Um, <laughs> and, but at, at this point, my board is so scattered, and I don't know if it makes any difference. Uh, he promotes his free retreater, and he has the counter catcher, which is going to absolutely decimate my uh, my dragonite. My dragonite has three retreats, so Thorn Tempest Fortress, which it, with its uh, Iron Crash attack, is going to do 20 plus 20 damage for each uh, energy cost in that Pokemon's retreat cost. So it does 80 damage to me. Um, really swinging for a lot. And realistically, that puts both of my remaining attackers in just like a range where they're in danger. He recycles the uh, Cycle Bronze on with War Ball and uh, comes in for the big swing. I'll go ahead and judge us both, which will I'll probably be able to sand flap and uh, myself and get four new cards. I don't really pull anything off of that sand flap. I guess a double gust, and I'll double gust up the bronze on. We're gonna have to shame it again. And I'll just go for a pass. And the good thing is this bronze egg does not have a way to attack right now. We've already used DRE, so. So it is not an immediate threat. Uh, he uses Professor's Bur Professor Birch's observations. Uh, get a new fresh hand. He brings in Power Shark Delcaddy. And he's going to get some energy on top of the deck. Attach return to Pine Co. And he'll excitable draw and send it back over to me. Attach to Celebi, and I'll have an Olympia as my switch out, and I'll sand flat myself. Wait, did I double attach? I mean, let's let's back that up. <laughs> um, it's certainly looking like I double attached. Uh, oops. I guess this is what uh, what happens when you when you watch these games back as you see your mistakes. Uh, I don't think no, neither MP or I caught this. Um, but uh, we'll continue on. Yeah, so I drew for turn. I attach Psychic, yes, that is not using Forest Breath and I'll Olympia into Celebi. Sandflap. I was looking for a Forest Breathable energy, but that is not a Forest Breathable energy. Um, gonna reserve ticket and. Get. I have no idea what I'm getting here. Something. I think it's a spark because I promoted. Yes, I'm getting spark just because that's an easy way to sell energy back in play. I'm going to hit him with a time circle illegally. Uh, <laughs> I'll go for the X Transceiver. Getting Candela to power up his benched Pine Co. Stack that Candela draw with a reserve ticket, so he's really popping off. And he's gonna Sabrina Psychic Control get, I believe he gets a switch from me. Really cool card in this cube because it's flip coin, it heads, choose one of your opponent's trainer cards in their discard pile and use it. 
Um, I don't know, he, 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 he goes for the uh, double gusts. Um, I bring up the fortress because I, I would rather that guy just like be able to swing into that guy. I'm gonna swing in, I believe, with time circled. Uh, I'm gonna swoop the shaman away into a swabble that's gonna die so I can directly bring up Selby and go for yet another illegal time circle. I will, f I will get a forest breath and an energy attach for turn as well, which is great. Uh, but then we'll, we'll go for a time circle onto the fortress. I do have to chip this thing down at uh, at uh, oh, I'm gonna go for the deafen. Yes, the deafen makes a lot more sense. I'll go for the deafen. Um, I do have to chip this thing down. I have to two hit KO it. Uh, my attacker is at max to 90 HP unless I'm using the black belt, and uh, that's a one of in my deck. Um, he will easily be able to knock out this. Uh, knock out the Dragonite, and he'll pass to me. Um, and then I'm going to Brox Grit and throw back the whole squad. And by whole squad, I mean Dragonite and Shaman and a bunch of energy. Um, leaving the Lightning in this card for Spark at some turn. And I'll just go ahead and Draco Melody. And the great thing is, I don't know if it's, well, yeah, he's just gonna go ahead and take a KO on, on uh, Terria. We're just gonna throw down a research. Um, really digging. He might be digging for potentially another Sabrina's for like a double gust play. I don't remember what happens. Um, Ah, Warp Point. He's digging for Warp Point. I give him Azelf. And he happily takes the Azelf with um, his... I don't remember what he takes it with. He might take it with... He takes it with Delcati. Yeah. Um, at which point, Delcati's a huge threat. He's got 90 HP. The only way I'm going to knock it out is with Dragonite, so I have to, have to, have to hit the, uh, the Shaman here. So I'm going to Sand Flat myself. I do hit the Shaman, but I also hit Black Belt. Um, so I get to use Def in here, which is great. So I'm going to use the Energy and Item Lock as well. I'll attach floatstone, uh, so heal with, or so uh, strange spin doesn't do as much damage. But I don't think that's the right spot to do that. In retrospect, uh, it's probably on the Altaria. But I do well. I do know that the Altaria can just get uh, yoinked by the Unknown D. Um, I, to be honest, I know really bad spot. <laughs> um. He gets the energy on the Unknown D with Candela. He's got one guard left in deck, but uh, his point in the game doesn't really matter. He'll go in and give me a nice little spread arena. Um, and I can come back in with the heal wing. Um, attaching in. Oh, I realized that I that I needed to attach to Shaman, but uh, this theoretically in this uh, at some point attacking with Shaman could be cool, but right now I'm not going to heal the Altaria fast enough and Fortress resist Grass as you can see there. Um, ponder my options for a little bit here. 
and then go for the healing to take the KO. Once again, I get Sabrina Psychic Controlled. He will grab the Flygon. That is about the game. Um, because he will be able to KO the Flygon with basically anybody. And then the next turn, he'll be able to promote uh, Unknown D with taking off with the, take off the Altaria by devolving it. So. I've already used my Olympia. That's my one way to heal in conjunction. And my Swablu has 50 HP. That's the max HP on my Swablu's. So I promote Dragonite. And there's not really anything I can do. Um, and so we'll go to game two. So that's so I'm not I wasn't too broken up about uh wasn't too broken up about messing up the messing up the uh extra attachment because I was, I was totally losing that game anyway. Um so we're gonna go into game two and uh and we'll we'll hope for a little bit better luck and a little bit better play on my part. Um we're both opening with a couple mulligans. I start with an unknown Q here, uh, draw for turn, and then I have a minuscule existential crisis of like, is he going to have warp points and like uh, KO somehow on my guy? But I'm like, I have to just play like he's not going to have it, and thankfully he does not. Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, so you see here, I'm thinking about playing down the Azelf to have another guy, but I instead am like, wait, no, playing down Azelf is totally a throw. I don't need more guys in play. Like, I don't know if I need Azelf. Last game I needed it because Dragonite was prized. He does not have it, so he just attaches and benches some guys and excite and draws. Um, I have the Pokeball for Altaria. And... Bug catcher for four. I see Shaman, which is great. And a quick ball, which is also great. It's not that great. It's not. I'm actually just loading up energy right now. I'm gonna go for the drain Um I believe I have, yeah, I have a rainbow in hand, so I'm going to get flag on. Um Basically, in my in in my games, I kind of had to flowchart who I was going to bring out based on what energy I had available to me. If I've got grass, I've got rainbow. I'm going to I'm going to bring out flagon. He has an absolutely bonkers start with ball guy, so he gets his whole board set and ready to go. Um, does a little bit of spread to me with thorn tempest, and then gives me a spinning blow. I do the same thing again, where I should have, <laughs> I should have attached to the queue. Uh, but uh, alas, this time I take the damage, but I also take a KO. After sand flapping him is the key. So now he's got a totally different hand and how is he going to react to that? The max damage he can do to my man out here is looking to just do the 40 and run away again by attaching to the fortress and so he's gonna do the 40 attaching to shaman for turn and just gonna Olympia and retreat back into Flygon and take a prize. MP starts off by doing a little hand disruption of his own. 
and he's going to seemingly not find too much. Reserve ticket to set himself up theoretically for some more draws, but I always have a sand flap available. This reserve ticket probably should be saved for Sometime when it's not going to be disrupted, he just attaches and swings. At which point I attach to Shaman, I retreat out, and I go for the Energy Bloom. Uh, first going Judge, and then looking myself again, and not really finding that great but the energy bloom heals some damage off the flygon and i do have to chip down this fortress anyway so it seems advantageous he finds the birch off of my sand flap and uh, question mark contemplates his existence this fortress does have three retreat oh, okay so he's going to shut the surprise time machine in Do some shenanigans here. He's gonna pull out the other fortress and run over it, uh, run away. A oh, counter catcher and run away. So he's gonna chip me down a little bit more. He goes into Rotom. Um, thing is here, I don't want the Rotom. I'd rather KO one of these. Uh, Fortress, so I'm just going to compete for sure Double Gust. Picks up Shaman, and I Lily and find an energy. So we're just going to attach Retreat out of Shaman. great thing is he's still a two-hit KO away, even though I've got eight damage on me with this particular. He surprise time machines into the other one. I mistakenly add some damage, or damage counters. Um, puts down a base and is able to hit me for 60, which is a knockout, so he gets there. I swoop that away. I have an energy restore in hand, so I can legally attach these energies to the Celebi and him with a time circle. The other benefit of this is I put the Shaman into the discard pile. Um, time, circle, time circle is very cool. It uh, is going to um, prevent me from being damaged by stage ones or stage twos. At the end there, I also Brock's Grit, so I got the Flygon back, I got the Shaman back, so I'm ready to get another attack in. Um, I can't do too much because he'd have to attach another energy to Fortress to just retreat out of it. So, like, going for the dual trans, I mean, you could do it, but, like... Oh, wait, no, he has to attach two energy, because it's uh, the secret base is in play. So... He's just gonna bench some guys, draw a fresh hand to seven. And I believe he just gives it the yeah, he gives it the big old pass. Um, I force breath, attach return, and I'm gonna go ahead and switch into Shaman and get out or switch into Altaria and get out Dragonite. Now with the four energy on the Celebi, ready to make another big play. Get some Shaman action going on. He finishes off Altaria with an Iron Crash, and I just promote, slam the level ball, slam the Shaman, and can't slam a Def, and I have to go heal him here. Erica, and I do believe on this Erica, I just flat out find a judge. 
Oh, I chat talk for Josh. Okay. So. Just throw on a float stone to just uh, add salt to the wound so he's not going to be able to really impact my Dragonite with, with Fortress or Bronze on damage. At this point, I'm up two prizes on him. I've got two more to go. And he only has two attachments on the Bronze on. Or sorry, on the Bronze on. No bronze on in sight. Four card hand on the fresh judge. Pondering his existence, he goes into Pineco and Psychic Controls and Erica to draw some cards. Finds the bronze on and uh, bird keepers into it. chat tot and attempt to heavy potential me out of the game here so add some or tempest but i do have the training center stadium bump and that just about seals up the game yep we're game three um this game i have a uh, an unknown why start He has an unknown D start and he just attach passes. I have a ball guy and so I just get all of my balls out of the deck. Um, I, I end up being really conservative with them. Um, I play down a swab blue, I use unknown Y to yield an energy and then I just, I just uh, pass it back over to him. Actually, no, I don't. I, I slap him for a big 20 with hidden power. Very impactful. Um, he only has one Iono in deck, so his disruption is mainly on board rather than rather than hand disruption. So I'm, I'm I feel pretty comfortable just holding those balls there. Um, I feel like I won't get punished, so I do just bubble ball for Altaria, yield for a second psychic energy. I think I'm considering quick balling for something. Um, just because I am in danger of getting strange spin somehow, but no, I just attach to the Altaria and Draco Melody getting Dragonite. The reason I go Dragonite here is I don't have the energy attachments to flag up for Flagon. I don't have the rainbow energy. I also do realize that I have Brock's Grit prized. So um, the guys that I have are the guys that I have. Uh, I don't have a way to get them back in play, and I don't necessarily want to play down Azelf to guarantee it off prizes, because it's just a liability. Unknown Y is basically a free prize, but it's a free prize that gets me attacking really early. So he finds not, uh, not, uh, Cycler Bronze on, but uh, but uh, Miracle Oracle. Um, he actually did like just like table talking. Let me know, like he like he he was complaining that it was prize and it was and Cycler Bronze on was prize in two out of three games. Honestly, I mean that that is a big uh, stroke of luck in my favor because that thing is a menace. Um, but he just evolves into the Miracle Oracle Bronzong and passes. Um, at this point, I kind of recognize that, that, hey, this might be just like his draw engine and just like he, the way he's going to try and draw out of like a dead hand here. So I just kind of go for the KO. I drew a rainbow energy off the top. So I'm going to yield and double gust. He brings up another Y. He's stupidly attached to Dragon. I should have attached to Altaria, but... Well, no, it's not stupid. I'm healing. I'm healing. What am I saying? Uh, and I'm just going to knock that uh, Bronze on uh, out of existence. Um, and leave him with not a strong board. He's going to stack his deck probably leading uh, into a draw supporter of some kind. Yeah, I'm 
Candela powering up. We're going to get some Thorn Tempest. Um, and right now the Thorn Tempest is hitting for massive damage. My guy has three retreats, so it's 20 plus 20 for each retreat. So he's hitting for 80 plus the uh, Thorn Tempest um, sprinkle of one damage counter across the board. So really a threat. Um, this next turn, I try and be a little bit cheeky. I Altaria out, or I Olympia out into Altaria, and then I go and get Flygon. But then I immediately get punished and get counter -catchered. He birches for seven, and off the last card of the birch, he gets the Defiant Band that he needs to take the KO um, and blast me away. So now I'm <laughs> I'm pretty down bad. I got, I got I've got one energy on board. I cannot recycle Dragonite. Um, and the fortress is like, I mean, it's not doing major damage, but like, I don't really have anything right now. I do have teammates, but I don't really get anything good off the teammates. I don't know what I'm like. I, I definitely misplay here. I probably could have gotten something better off teammates. I end up getting a couple weird cards. Uh, <laughs> um, I don't have an energy attachment in hand and I'm like, it feels pretty cringe to go get an energy attachment, although I should have gotten rainbow energy. I just should have gotten rainbow energy here. Um, instead, I go for an energy restore, I believe. Energy restore is the only other way for me to get energy back from the discard. I, you will also notice as you're scrolling through right here, I did prize two psychic energy as well. So my unknown why is basically dead. Um, so I go get get myself an energy restore and um, Erica to draw some cards. I stupidly attach a psychic energy. I should have attached a lightning so I could yield more in play. Although maybe not. I I I, I honestly don't know if it's the right play, but I attached a psychic for some reason there. Um, and then after this, I'm just going to go for the sand flap. Now the good thing is at least that Altaria is not going to be able to get knocked out. We're on even prizes, so the Defiant Band is not active. He's doing 40 damage to me, 60 max, so he's not taking a KO. I, oh, and actually I'm going to Cotton Guard, so I'm doing 30 damage to him, and he might just be Iron Crashing for 10 damage. Um, so that does make things a little bit better, um, but my board is not strong. Um, I have a Swirlix in hand, but I'm not going to bench it. I didn't bench uh, Slurpuff at all this series, but I don't, like, I think that was fine. I think that was the right play. Um, I'm just kind of waiting for it. took a short pause um, at this point after MP decimated my board. And I think I just explained to him what I'm doing, and then uh, a sand flap hit. <laughs> as, as one does, and I go for the uh, Cotton Guard. So off his new hand. Um, doesn't look like much. <laughs> uh, war points. Um, I give him Shaman. I think at that point I want to just kind of like potentially protect information of just like I want to get Shaman in the discard pile because he knows that Brock's is my only way to get it back. Um, um Probably should have dumped the Y, but I'll just let him feast on it later. Um, he goes ahead and surprise time machines. Um, we did notice a little, a little later, later we noticed a little gameplay error is that he used surprise time machine and then evolved timer ball. It ultimately is not impactful. He could have just surprised time machine into the guy he eventually time revolved for. So, no biggie there. Um, we'll eventually fix the amount of damage counters that are on the board. 
helps because he does need. We first inadvertently put it on Pineco, but we do have to double on Fortress. Um, I just end up uh, attach passing here. Sure. I judge. Yeah, a terrible feel. Like I got a massive hand. I judge. And I don't hit the right hand. Um, I quick follow away the lightning. That's not right. Thing. I get nothing. Yeah, I quick follow away the lightning. Um, I get. Oh, I get chat top, but then I night, then I realize oh, this guy's. This is so bad. I just played a supporter. So I then I night teleporter um, and get a single rainbow. Iron. Um, that was just fine. I mean, whatever. We thinned the quick ball out. Not great, but. <laughs> um, and I sand flat myself. He and pass. Now at this point, you'll see that my my mistake of promoting the uh, shaman over the Y is going to come back to bite me because he's going to take two prizes this turn. Spread some more chip onto my Flygon and Terria. I promote Alteria because I don't have the energy attachment yet. I judge and I miss it. I sand flap and I miss it. Bench a Swablu and I attach to it. Now the great thing about this Swablu is that it does have bench protection. Um, so the only part, the only thing that's getting damage right now is the Wygon. I have Cotton Garden, so I'm taking one from the from the uh, Scatter Bomb. I think is the attack. The Thorn Tempest me and goes ahead with the Scatter Bomb. Then I top deck the energy. Really? Um, no reserve tickets, and I set on top the training center. So I have a big buff, uh, ginormous flag on, and I hit him with the cotton guard. The great thing about training center is that I'm always two shotting him, but putting down the training center might mess up his math. Um, he surprised time machine so he can spread some more fortress damage. Now the really important thing that I hadn't mentioned is the past couple turns that, is that MP did miss a couple energy attachments, um, which was huge, huge at keeping me in the game, because right now he has one energy on board, and he's going to end up going for an excitable draw here. Or no, he, go, he goes for a dual trans. Um, dual trans to power up but I have Volkner in hand to Volkner for Dulgus. Um, <clears throat> I go ahead and attach to Swablu and retreat out of it into Flygon and flap him away. Um, I play Training Center and flap myself, um, better hand. Um, I have the Swoop Teleporter now in hand. The eventual play with that is that I want to swoop away the Swablu into right hands. Um, Swablu has bench protection, so he's the best guy I can put down right now. Um, and he's just going to hang out there as a Swablu until he needs to be a Reggie. Um, he does find the secret base, but he does have to just excitable draw. Because um, his hand is not great. I can computer search for Spark and excel some energy to the Swab Loom. Um, attach return and sand flap. Now I have finally taken the lead and he is without energy on board. And Funny thing is that he really, it, I, I think it was a misplay to go for the excitable draw there because you always just go for the dual, dual trans. You just, you like, you have to say, okay, he, I don't have that, I don't have the second double gust because I'm always going to sand flap your hand down if you draw up. So 
that definitely I think was an impactful misplay. I think he should have just gone for the dual trans and gotten some energy. He is able to accelerate some because he does pull off the Candela. Um, and I think on this turn, he's just going to go for the unknown uh, kill on the Altaria. He's Sabrina's Psychic Controls, and he's going to... I, I don't know what he psychic controlled there. He psychic controlled something. Oh, it was like a Pokeball. It was Pokeball to get the Fortress. Um, in this situation, I don't do, do, do too much. I just lowly to draw up some cards. I'm going to attach the all to the Swablu. Um, Windstorm. I did draw the Windstorm, so I am in a lot less pressure um, from Iron Crash. Iron Crash is now doing max 40 damage, so I, I am out of range from Flygon. Bird Keepers into the Fortress. Very crucially, and I, I did kind of check through his discard pile there, very crucially he Exhausts his last switch card. He goes ahead and counter catchers and hits the Swablu with the Iron Crash. Now, unfortunately, once we get to this point, it didn't really matter who he took the KO with. Um, so my and then my 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 basically final turn here, I just go ahead and play down Chaptot and Lucky Match for Volkner and I get Floatstone. So now he's doing a maximum of 20 damage from Iron Crash, and I hit him with the Sand Tomb. Um, at that point, the game is over, but he doesn't realize that Sand Tomb's second effect is that uh, it prevents retreating. Um, and so he's digging a little bit for a retreat, um, but uh, he did just play his last switch in Bird Keeper. So that is the game. Um, I really played bad in the first. Uh, in the uh, the first, and you can see him there, tried to retreat, but uh, I really played bad in the first set, or first match of the set, but I think I think I improved my play a little bit in the second and third. I kept my bench a little bit smaller. As you can see at the end here, I'm just rocking a couple guys so they couldn't really just like checkmate me out of the game. Um, I did really get a little bit of, of luck here as well, just by um, prizing Cycler's own two out of three games. Um, but that's Pokemon. I mean, I'm sure similar luck will come back to bite me in the end. Um, but uh, but yeah, it was a really, really tight set, really fun. And it was a great opponent. Um, and we're on to round two. Uh, in round two, I have uh, Gil as my matchup, and it's a really vicious uh, stage one rush kind of deck with a lot of damage mods. We got two Giovanni Scheme. Um, and a lot of a lot of little mini spread packages too. So I got I got to watch my unknown wise again. There's a lantern in here that does 30 damage to anything that has an energy attachment to it. So like that plus a Jolteon spread and like my unknown is toast. So gonna try and watch out for that that one in this game. But um, uh, we'll catch you next time.